Uh, the most overrated thing in all of sports, uh, maybe the most overrated thing in all of humanity, might be spring training for football. For anything, for that matter. Spring training for football. I've told you before that it is the driving range of sports. It doesn't mean that it's unnecessary. It doesn't mean that it's not productive. You can't take anything out of it. Now, I'm saying this because then I'm going to flip around. You're going to say, wait a second, Jeff. You're acting as if something really important happened. It did. It has. It's impactful. It's crucial. But it's not exactly what happened on the field that you can define success based on spring training. Okay? Don't get over your skis. And the person that got over their skis is the last person I thought would get over their skis. The sensible person appears to be the head coach. He did the right thing, said the right things. It's important. But you get in some good work on the driving range. You know that. Um, And then you can even say somebody looked good on the driving range or you felt good on the driving range or you hit it straight on the driving range, all that stuff. What you don't know is what happens, what you can take from the range to the real course. I like to say, when the lights come on, what do you have? Anybody can practice. So be careful what you take away from watching someone on the driving range. Enter Texas football and their quarterbacks and their quarterback situation, which is everything. It's going to define present day, and it's going to define their season of 2023. It's really, really important. And what you could take out of their spring training and their spring training game is actually quite a bit. Not because what happened on the field, it's because what was dictated, which is pretty interesting and honestly handled well. So here we go. There are some overreactions of course. And then there is, I will argue, and I'm not sure this is probably the takeaway most people will have, then there is the smart position of Steve Sarkeesian, who I've said, his job is on the line. But what he's done this past weekend is a smart position. Does it translate automatically to to on-field success? Probably not. It's the right thing to do right now. So the overreaction first. I, I, this is not how I thought it would. But it's not the direction I thought it would go. Um, the overreaction is a being a prisoner of the moment, right? Seeing whatever's right in front of you in practice can look really distorted. You don't learn anything from football practice as you're watching it. You don't. So the prisoner of the moment is pretty ridiculous. I give you Robert Griffin III. Bob, what are you doing, man? Not a stupid guy by any stretch. I will point out some irony to where Robert Griffin III is going. Look, if you're a fan and you love this, that's fine. Eat it up. When you're an analyst, you got to be better. All right, so uh, uh, this is SI.com. ESPN analyst Robert Griffin III, great player himself. Pretty good on the air, too, I might say. Gets a little excited, but I think uh, he's not a stupid guy. He tweeted, just called the Texas spring game, and Sark has his team ready to win a Big 12 championship and contend for a national championship. Oh, my God. (laughs) They went from the Alamo Bowl. Let me tell you what you can't do. Okay, I'm sorry to pour water on. I'm sorry to be a buzzkill. You know what you can't do? You can't go from losing in the Alamo Bowl to contending for the national championship in the month of April. I'm pretty sure you can't do that. Would you bet on this right now? Would you take that bet? Would Bob take that bet? Are you kidding me? You made that decision between the last time you saw Texas play, they lost in a home game in the Alamo Bowl. And now they're contending for the national championship. Oh, my, Bob. Are you kidding? So let me break this down based on what you really know. Okay? And I will will give you the buzzkill. And I will not stop you for one single second. If you want to be a face painter and you want to say, that's it, Robert Griffin III said we're winning it all. I'm there, Ward. You go right ahead and paint your face. I'm not going to paint it for you. So let me tell you what you do know. 
What you do know is Texas has a lot of skilled, I'll use this nerdy football term, perimeter players. Okay, They have a lot of those guys. They can catch and they can run. When you hear the term out in space, that means getting away from the tackles. They have that. They're athletic. They're fast. You can throw it out to some guy and nine times out of 12 during the regular season, those guys can make somebody else miss. They have, Texas has, I know this, you should know this, they have a few athletic edge players. These are people that rush the passer and basically chase the ball down. Okay, they've got that too. They can rush the quarterback even. Texas has pretty good kicking. So I would say better than pretty good kicking. They're 21 and 26. That's good. Those are the best three things about the Texas team based on the body of work on the course, you know, under the lights and on the course, the stuff that matters. That's what you know. That's what I can tell you. I'm pretty certain I feel comfortable with that. So that's based on the body of work in 2022. So what you saw a year ago, most of that stuff is back and they can do some of that stuff again. Those things, you know. Texas was a mediocre eight and five, or pretty good. You want to call it whatever you want. It was eight and five, and they lost their last game, a home game in the Alamo Bowl. Got it? It was a, it was like a pinball game, but it scored all over the place to a pretty good Washington team. That's what we know. Okay, you don't just go, you don't shoot ninety six at Lions Municipal Golf Course in Austin, Texas, go to the driving range, and I watch you and go, oh my gosh, he's going to go the next round tomorrow. He's going to shoot sixty nine. You don't do that, because you can't. It's not real. So that's what you do know that you have. You have some good, pretty good stuff from a team that won eight games. That's the stuff you know you have. You also know this. You know this because of the body of work, the stuff that really counts. When the lights are on, when the whistle blows, all those cliches, that's what you do know. What you do know is you have an up-and-down quarterback on an up-and-down team. And it's up-and-down mainly because their quarterback at times is solid. At times, even really good. He is also, at times, a mess. This is why Robert Griffin III's comments are ironic at best. (laughs) They are unbelievably short-sighted. Because I credited Robert Griffin III with a signature moment in broadcasting of Texas games a year ago. I thought, what a great point. He's exactly right. To go from that point, and I'll I'll tell you what it was, to today they're going to win the Big 12 and contend for the national championship is pretty bizarre since Last time we left you, you recommended that the Texas coach take the ball from his quarterback. So, I'll be the buzzkill. If you want to say, shut up, Ward, leave it alone, we're going all the way, you say that all you want. But let me just try to rein everyone in a little bit, because I think there's something really important that happened. And I think there's something really important coming from the head coach that was stated. I think something very mature and strategic did take place. There's a takeaway. It's just not the takeaway is you're going to win it all. You don't win it all in April. Sorry, you don't. Doesn't happen. You don't win it in August. All right, so you know this. You know you got some good stuff. You know you got a team that can run. It's a fast, athletic team. That isn't changing. They can, they can outrun most teams they play. That's not the entire game, as you know. A lot of times the game goes north and south. That's important. So, you know, you've got a quarterback that's really been up and down. Um, I mean, a complete dumpster fire at some times and a guy with a hot hand at other times. His last outing was his best. You do know that, too. And a really good game against Washington and a home game for Texas that they lost. The star of the day for Texas, arguably the best player on the field, would have been Texas's quarterback, Quinn Ewers. He played really well. You know that. So that was late December. So you know that, but that's not April. And you can't erase those other days because in November, there were some bad days. But you know that, and you know you got that so far. You also know you lost the best running back in the college game. You lost your safety net for your entire offense. You lost the guy that at times had to completely carry your offensive team. You've lost him. Texas is a good run-blocking team up front. 
They're not a very good pass blocking team. You know that. You don't know that in April. You know that based on the body of work. That's the way it's been. They are sketchy in pass protection. And the quarterback who was the starter, who's now going to be the starter, can't move around a heck of a lot. That's a dangerous mix. You know that because you've seen games, real games, real uniforms, real whistles, real lights, all the stuff that really counts. That's what we know. It's good and bad. It's pretty good for the most part. It's an eight-win team. That's what you know. Now, how much better than that, you don't know. And neither does he. (laughs) Okay? So, the irony of Robert Griffin saying, and I'll read you the tweet again. It's like this came straight from a fan painting their face. We're actually just sitting there while the game is going. Spring game. I didn't say regular season game. A spring game is going on. It's like someone really painting their face, tweeting. That I would expect. Okay, he says they're going to win the Big 12 championship and contend for the national championship. There was a moment Texas is playing Baylor. Robert Griffin III played at Baylor, won a Heisman Trophy, spectacular quarterback who, unfortunately for him, got stuck in Washington and his head got kicked in. Okay, he had one of the most, I thought, and I believe I said it at the time, perceptive moments of the entire season a year ago. Texas is clinging to a lead. I think it I think it was two points. It may have been three. They're playing Baylor. Pretty good team. These are two pretty good teams. In Austin, Quinn Ewers has been pretty bad. It's been spotty at best, but Texas has played good enough defense, and B. John Robinson has been spectacular. So they're in the game and they're leading. Now, it's pretty clear. I think Texas started the, the drive in their own 15 or something like that. It's pretty good. Pretty good chance this is your chance to close out a game. As Texas is coming onto the field, the same guy that just tweeted out they're going to contend for the national championship said, if I'm the Texas coach, I'm taking the ball away from my quarterback. They did, and they won. Okay, you can't go from that in November to contending for a national championship. He was right. It was one of the smartest moments of the season, not just from an analyst. It was one of the smartest moments of the season by Steve Sarkeesian, the head coach. A guy that had routinely left his quarterback in the game too long, my opinion, and called too many pass plays particularly when they played TCU in Austin inside the 10 when you've got the best back in the game. He's out there chunking at six of eight downs. It was a smart moment. They did take the ball away from Quinn Ewers and ran it, I believe, 11 times. Ended up scoring, winning the game. That same Robert Griffin III, the analyst, said, take the ball from your quarterback. Now says they're going to contend for the national championship based on what he saw in April. Settle down. Settle down. Settle down, everyone. Now, there's a dose of reality. It's fanned. It's like the Cowboys. You're going to think to the greatest ever or the worst ever. Uh, I just don't think you should be getting that from an analyst. I don't know what you can take away. You can say so-and-so looks sharp. So-and-so doesn't look sharp. Uh, This was a good practice. This was a bad practice. But you can't project April into anything more. Except the head coach did the right thing. It's a buzz kill too. He did the right thing by providing the buzz kill. So, of course, the most anticipated, it's the most anticipated Texas recruit I, I can remember since some guys I played with. Okay. Um, and maybe more so because he's got Manning on the back of his jersey. The most watched high school player in the entire country. Comes to Texas early, so it is the most watched quarterback battle because every fan of every stripe, every network wants someone named Manning to be a starting quarterback at Texas. It's just cooler that way. Everybody wants it. Everybody anticipates it. Every time Quinn Ewers throws an incomplete pass, I've already told you, people will be screaming for someone with Manning on the back of their jersey to come in the game. It is set up. I mean, look, uh, you can feel whatever you want for Quinn Ewers, but man, what a nightmare it must be to know that every slight mistake, not even the big ones, he's made plenty of big mistakes, every slight mistake, everybody wants somebody with name Manning on their shirt to come in and take your place. It's just set up that way. There will be a camera on him 
every incomplete pass, every interception, every punt probably, the camera will quickly go to someone with the name Manning on the back of their jersey on the Texas sideline. But you know what? He's going to be in a cap. And his coach has already said it, which was the right thing to do. Let me explain why, which is a total buzzkill as well. So you've got this anticipated quarterback battle, not for bad reasons, by the way. Quinn Ewers wasn't good enough. Wasn't. It was spotty. It was sketchy. It was up and down. He, he, he had to have the ball taken away from him a few times. So it's not outrageous to say maybe somebody can take the job from him. That's not an outrageous thing to say. Okay, but then you get into the only option you have, and that is a spring game. Okay, you get only all you have is a driving range right now. That's all you have to judge to make these decisions. You know, one of the screwy things about college football, this is not new. They don't play enough. They don't. So what you know now, you don't have a heck of a lot of time going into your fall training. They don't it's not like the NFL. It's not even like high school. They don't practice that much. So what you know in August when you go to train is pretty much the way it's going to be. You don't have chance, you don't have, you don't have games to decide. You don't have preseason games. You have you know some made for scrimmages, but they're hard to get a read on. So this moment and what he said is really really important because that's going to be your starter. That you know, I think it was the right thing to do. So um, the quarterbacks. So the Arch Manning craze. Um, there's several things and several reasons why you have to pour water on this, and his coach did it, and for pretty good reason. For one, in our only chance to see him outside of a private school league in high school, he didn't look very good. No. But, but Jeff, it's a driving range. Right. That's all you got for this guy. All you know is a high school league and now a driving range, and it just isn't good enough. Okay? It's not off the charts. You usually don't win a job in April, but he didn't do anything close to being able to win a job in April. Not even close. In fact, it was pretty bad. It just wasn't very good. Doesn't mean he's going to be a disaster. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, you got all you guys get on the driving range and one guy snap hooks it in the highway, it's not good enough. He was 5 of 13 for 30 yards. Does that mean he's never going to be good? No. No, that's an overreaction. But on the body of work right now for him, you've got a high school guy who's playing in a private school league, and then he's got a he's got a scrimmage game in Austin in April. What does it mean? It's five for thirteen for thirty yards is not enough to take the job. You don't hand the job to someone who does that just because they have Manning on their shirt. So the second reason why I think Sarkeesian is doing the right thing by pouring water on the Arch Manning craze, and that's what I'll call it for now. I think it's the right thing to do is to pour water on that to be the buzzkill. He rightly poured water on it when he said very clearly and without any confusion whatsoever, it might have been the first thing out of his mouth after an April inter squad game. He all but said, lighten up on the Arch Manning stuff pretty much what he said, and it was the right way to go. He named Quinn Ewers his starter. He named him his starter in April. In fact, he said, what was the exact comment? Um, Quinn Ewers is our, is our starter. That's pretty clear. Yeah, that's pretty clear. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to say. I'll explain to you why. Because your you, you team needs some direction. It, it needs to stop the Arch Manning craze. Yeah, he says, Quinn Ewers is our starting quarterback, and we feel very good about that. But I don't ever want to take the stinger out of these guys that they're not competing for something. Yeah. Buzzkill, I know. Not only that, I think the kid is third, <laughs> so he's going to be in a hat for a while, and that's probably justified. Steve Sarkeesian says, I thought Quinn was really efficient today. I think it's pretty clear to say that Quinn is our starting quarterback. Um, I know people want to believe, well, why would you do that? He hasn't been good enough, Ward. I mean, why not have some competition? Because the guy competing for him isn't close enough, anywhere close enough, to justify Dropping that hand grenade out there that, I don't know, it's going to be a quarterback controversy. It's going to be a quarterback battle. You don't need that. 
I think I can explain why you don't need that, why you don't need it now. And that doesn't mean that Quinn Ewers can't fall apart again. It's a real risk. So it, it's clear that Arch Manning is not ready, okay? Even the eyeball test at the driving range is good enough for that. Five of 13 for 30 when you're playing against your own guys is not... Is not a great day. It doesn't mean it's never going to work. It's just not good enough right now. Number two, Quinn Ewers is the best he's got. He is. And at times, it can be really good. At times, it can be kind of scary. Number three, whoever your starter is, and I will applaud Steve Sarkeesian for this, even though I'm the guy who said he should have yanked his starter a year ago, but whoever your starter is, you want them supremely confident, and you don't want them looking over their shoulder particularly when the name is Manning on the back of the shirt and it's an absolute full-on craze and it's a craze that could have been a wildfire if you didn't sort of pour it out right now which I thought was the right thing to do the kid's not even close not even close so what you don't need is the noise and your quarterback ever wondering between now and the time you line up and play for real You don't want him looking over his shoulder. You don't want him questioning himself. And then maybe even more importantly than that, you don't want a football team wondering. It's just not close enough to wonder. The kid's not good enough to make anyone wonder. The answer's been delivered right now, for right now. He's their third guy, which is another story, but he's their third guy. And you don't need a controversy with your third guy. So... I blamed Steve Sarkeesian a year ago for not yanking his start. And I don't, I'm not a fan of that, man. I, I'm a fan of the way it works in the NFL is here's the ball, go, go. And you don't look back. You're the guy. And that's the way you want to operate. And I think Sarkeesian wanted to operate that way. But I think he, the leash on Quinn Ewers was far too long a year ago. He should have been pulled at various times. Would it have solved all their problems? No. He just wasn't good enough. But right now, the message you have to send to him and your team is the decision is made and you give him the ball until he deserves to lose the ball. That's the way you operate. The team needs that confidence. He needs that confidence. He doesn't need to be looking over his shoulder, particularly as someone who's not even close. You don't need it. You don't. The clear message needed to be sent that Arch Manning needs to be on the shelf. That needed to be done. Like, it it just, I know every network is furious about it. And I don't think it'll stop people from you know, putting a camera on. I mean, that's not his fault. I don't think it's going to stop people from wanting and begging and that, you know, the Manning camp stuff. But this was the right play, the right call, the right way to say it. I do. I think he said it the right way. Um, Ewers can be very good. I mean, he, he can be a good passer. He can also be a mess. You know what is actually now somewhat of a relevant controversy, and I'm not putting too much weight into April. But they, so we go, Jeff. We've got you've got one starter, and you've got a third guy. What does that mean? Their second guy has a better skill set than all of them. I don't know that that means he can go from the driving range to playing, but there's somebody with a skill set better than all three, or better than both. So the leash will be short on yours next year. I think if Steve Steve Sarkeesian has to yank him, if he comes apart again, by the way, if he comes apart again next year and he's left in too often, and he'll cost himself the job and he'll cost his head coach the job. So the leash will be short. Uh, But I don't think the guy that takes the ball next is going to be named Arch Manning. 